I guess uh, the best way to describe uh, how I interacted with, uh, you know, Tony and um, all of his uh, downtown happenings was as kind of a business, a, a competing business, a, be a business in the same vertical. Um, you know, I was uh, an executive at a casino and um, looking, always trying to do different things uh, to to drive revenue, to capture the market, to capture engagement, to to get people to pay attention to what we were doing. And so um, being in a, in a competing vertical, at least uh, on the food and beverage side or just on the cultural side, um, a lot of what we did was driven by uh, Zappos culture and what Tony had already brought down there. So um, it, we were, <clears throat> it was a lot of businesses like that, even the casino space. Um, I think if anybody says that they weren't trying to at least um, uh, catch up to what Tony was doing downtown. They, they're lying. I mean, one of the things that comes to mind um, was so frequently being um, at, at internal meetings and we would come up with something and, um, you know, almost immediately the next bullet point would be like, well, how do we get Zappos involved? Because you knew if the Zappos employees bought into what you were coming up with, um, you had tapped into that culture or you were considered cool or downtown was going to accept you in some way. So um, obviously they were culture drivers and we were all culture vultures really is what it was. Uh, how did he transform downtown? It was a place that wasn't very um, upkept and it had a lot of plight before he came along, but how did, from your perspective, how did he change the vibe of downtown? Well, I think downtown obviously since the advent of the strip, downtown has always kind of been niche, right? And, and prior to Tony's arrival, it was still a niche um, experience. I think what Tony did was he expanded that niche through modernization, through culture and color, and, and kind of made that niche um, more open, more inclusive, um, invited more people down, gave people um, a reason to come down um, beyond just, you know, what was typically being promoted at that time or what was particularly uh, typically perceived at that time was maybe just some uh, some discounted dining and gaming, right? And that's kind of what downtown was as a brand prior to Tony. Um, when Tony arrived, obviously he brought um, he brought some culture, he brought some he brought some vibe, he brought some color, and he brought some cool. And that's a driver um, for a market, especially one like downtown. And so if you add up all of you know, not just the investments, there was obviously a lot of eateries and things that he was involved with. Um, the thousand employees that were down there were all part of a culture that um, helped, that, that it kind of it, it kind of hit critical mass in that building, it kind of expanded out. His Fungineer program is legendary, right? Everybody wanted to be a Fungineer. Um, what did that mean? Well, it just meant, you know, let's have fun. And so he brought all of that downtown with him, obviously, those thousand employees were were brand ambassadors and almost downtown ambassadors. And then you have all of the F&B culture that came with it, all of his investments that came with it, Life is Beautiful Music Festival that came with it. So um, there there was, I would say that, um, just to kind of cap this off, downtown was a niche. He expanded that niche um, um, through, you know, through basically what would be described as, as you know, his you know, happiness as a culture, but um, everything else that comes with that. And, and culture is is a word that gets thrown around a lot and and it's easy to say. Um, and it's it's sometimes missed, it, it's, it's harder to define, but if you look at really what a culture is, it's a way people act, it's a way people talk, it's a way people dress, it's a way they mingle, it's a way they socialize, um, it's a community. And so that's really kind of what culture is. And I think um, at least in his very specific lane, um, through F and B and through arts, um, really kind of drove that segment of the market. When we think about the future of downtown and the future of the idea, his his grandiose idea of what downtown was going to become or is becoming, what do you what do you think? Without that visionary kind of at the helm, um, what what does the future hold for maybe downtown? Well, you know, I think it's important to remember that um, Tony. Um, you know, had, had resigned his post as CEO uh, in August. And um, so there, downtown was going to have to exist without Tony to some extent anyway, right? So I think those things were already kind of uh, 
in progress. I think they were moving along. And by all reporting, it, it appears as though he was looking to emulate in Park City what he had done in downtown Las Vegas, at least to some extent. So I think we were, downtown was going to have to exist without Tony, at least to some extent anyway. And so when you think about the future, I think you have to look at a lot of other visionaries that are that are currently in place there and have been for some some time. I think Beverly Rogers of the Rogers Foundation, if you talk about investments, you know, every year it's millions of dollars in scholarships and arts and education, um, emulating uh, right out of, or not emulating, I'm sorry, let me start over. Sure. Um, when you look at when you look at some of the other visionaries in downtown and, and you start, you know, you, you look at someone like Beverly Rogers of the Rogers Foundation, who every year invests, you know, millions of dollars in arts and education. So if you want to talk investments and investments in the future, you could start with her and that hits right out of downtown. Um, obviously, Derek Stevens with Circa um, and all of the excitement that that's got opening at the end of this year, he managed to stay on schedule and open during a pandemic. Um, Corner Bar Management has launched quite a few concepts on Fremont East. They managed to stay on schedule, keep people employed and open in a pandemic. Um, Viva Vision is less than a year old. You know, the, the canopy was completely redone, you know, around this time last year. And so the, we didn't even really get a full tourist wave for that yet. And, and so that's exciting. Um, Project Enchilada, again, that's not even something that's really been uh, experienced by tourists yet, but that thing is set up to basically, you know, support a lot more pedestrian traffic. It's made things greener, it's made things wider. So um, that was a huge investment into downtown as well. And, and that's gonna open up a lot more opportunities. And, I, and I'll throw one other random at you, which you might say, well, Kip, that's not downtown, but Resorts World um, opening at, you know, next year, uh, it's not downtown, but if you're gonna talk about it, let's talk about it. There's 3,500 rooms that are gonna be a stone's throw away from downtown. And so if you think that that doesn't, bring the strip closer to downtown, I think I think you're ill-informed of the market. I, I certainly think that having a $4.3 billion bookend to the strip, that's really just a walking distance from Main Street, which has had a complete facelift as well, and you're in the Arts District. And then from the Arts District, you're three minutes away from everything else. So um, I think downtown um, not being so convention dependent as well. I think downtown not being so headliner or show dependent, in fact, I don't think there are any showrooms anymore in downtown, and, and that was even pre-pandemic. So a lot of those things that um, we are all excited about and the destination needs, um, conventions, shows, headlining performances, those are all going to be extremely exciting and obviously great for the destination. But downtown doesn't need those as much as the Strip might need them or, or rely on them as much as the Strip has or invested in them as much as the Strip has invested in them. So. If you look at just some of the things that have happened during the pandemic, some of the things that Tony has, uh, look, his fingerprint remains, and that will continue to exist through all of the things he has invested in or some of the other investments that, that have not uh, come to fruition yet. So you, you tag those along with the other visionaries like Beverly Rogers, like Derek Stevens, like Corner Bar Management, like what Project Enchilada can do, uh, like the Viva Vision and, and, and then Resorts World. I mean, you've got a string of things um, even post pandemic that actually look pretty positive for downtown. And I'm not just fluffing it. it it's actually kind of an exciting thing um, looking forward. Um, obviously all of this is destination as a whole dependent, but downtown is in a pretty good position to succeed. It may be impossible to answer this, but do you think all the projects that you have just outlined, also the Smith Center and the revitalization and building of those projects over there, do you think we would have even seen a fraction of these kinds of things had it not been for Tony Shea's investment in downtown. No, I mean, look, I, I've named a lot of people and all of those are, are extremely important to what's happened downtown. And there's some that I'm probably even missing. I think Tony was the face of downtown. Um, and, you know, it's a lot easier to attract um, investment dollars for Project Enchilada or investments for the Smith Center or for the v or for Viva Vision or for Circa to get funded. It's a lot easier when you've got the face of a community um, kind of screaming and, and giving you national attention. So while his money might not have been tied up in everything, his money was tied up in quite a few things we know, but while it might not have been tied up in everything, um, he was kind of the draw um, and gave, you know, looky-loos or outside investors or other project developers or people like myself who were just kind of competing in a similar vertical, 
um, a reason to go harder, go faster, or to try to tap into what was happening down there. So to answer your question, no, I think, I, and, and I think that goes without saying, and, and Life is Beautiful is one that I didn't even mention. That's still on the books for next year. And that's a huge, you know, uh, that's a huge driver to the market just in terms of visitation. Forget what it does in terms of marketing um, and all of that residual value. But, you know, those kinds of things are anchor, tent pole, um, kind of classic Tony Shea programs and really drive, um, you know, everything else that has kind of come downtown. And looking forward, um, even, you know, post Tony Shea, I think with some of the other people that are in place, in addition uh, to what, you know, he, he, in addition to his fingerprints, um, I, I think it's solid. I think downtown is solid. I think downtown's still fun. Downtown's still cool. Downtown's still going to be the place that you may not stay downtown. And I think this is important. You may not stay downtown, but I think now you want to check it out. And I think that's probably, uh, without a doubt, going to continue. And that FOMO is probably the most important driver for downtown right now. And I could see that lasting for many years. Um, Kip, I think we nailed on everything I wanted to touch on. Um, did I miss anything or the thing that you need to tell us about the topic that we're discussing today? No, you know, I, 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 I mentioned those other names just because I do, for, as a downtown guy, I do think that there's some other things that go without, that don't go noticed as mm -hmm. much. Someone like Beverly, who um, she gets some press, but you know, a lot of what she does is in the background. And so that's why I was calling out some of those. I, Tony gets a lot of attention and it's, and he certainly should. And obviously a lot of those things are gonna be felt for years to come, but now post Tony, you know, who else is there? Well, you know, some of those people I called out, I think are important to manage, mention. So that's kind of why I called them. Yeah. 